Yo, what's up squad? It's Elite Shot here, aka Sean, bring you guys another new stats, classes, and unlocks. This is where I show you guys everything I got for that prestige, and that's kind of about it. This video is gonna have no gameplay, so I apologize, and if you don't like boring videos, you better leave now. Anyways guys, my hat's not on, so I guess my game's not on either. So check it out! I reached this prestige in 7 hours, 25 minutes, and 39 seconds. Prestige 7. I'm getting up there. I'm, I'm prestiging faster than I thought. Well, the past two prestiges were extremely quick because they made an update where all of the challenges, or the operations they're called in this game, you can unlock without having to, to like, activate them. Before the update, you had to activate every challenge you wanted to complete. And I feel like not many people were actually doing that because I wasn't doing it. I didn't even pay attention to that. And I'm glad they made it this way because you level up so much faster now. So 7 hours, 25 minutes, and 39 seconds. Let's buy the next character. And 300 squad points. 300 squad points? It's so expensive. This ain't, this ain't no joke. Alright, let's buy this. Alright, so my first class. What should I buy? Because I'm not going to have many squad points. So I better make sure it's a class that I actually like. Hmm. I always pick either the Honey Badger or... Or the honey badger <laughs> i always pick this one because it's a pretty good class to start off with and they give you a bunch of stealthy perks that help you survive longer but the other ones aren't too bad and guess what i'm picking it again oh well let's go let's customize our guy because right now he looks like a fruit loop he has the dumbest stuff on so let's change him let's play a squad mate click press x let's customize this dude all right so i don't have any of the the special costumes because I don't know I don't feel like paying for something to look different and honestly if I'm playing a gameplay and I notice say a person that has the Captain Price skin because everyone has the Captain Price skin I'll go out of my way to kill Captain Price just because he has that skin he stands out like a sore thumb and I just have to kill him first I'm sorry to all you Captain Price users but you must die I'm just kidding I just don't I just don't buy the skins and stuff I don't know but I'm not gonna put that on a gender. Definitely male. I'm not a weirdo. Now for a face, I think I unlocked a new face. And really, the faces don't, you know, don't mean too much. This one looks cool. I guess he has some dirt in his face or something. So I'm like, yeah, that's probably not dirt, but pain or something. All right, for the headgear, I also believe I unlocked some new headgear stuff this prestige because I remember reading, you unlocked a new helmet as I was playing. What should I put on here? I'm trying to find a cool one. It's something I haven't used yet. Those look like gunner optics with earmuffs. That's the plain helmet. I want something cool that I haven't used. This, I still want to go for this. I've been saying it for every video, every prestige video, that I want to unlock this. Because look at this. He's wearing sunglasses. I don't know. He looks BA to me. I believe I used that. These are binoculars on his head. Jeez. Mm, which one do I want? I guess that's not too bad. I think I might have used it. That's not too bad either. These, I mean, the helmets aren't too bad. I think it's pretty cool how they actually brought this stuff in the first place. Yes! What? Kill 75 enemy guard dogs. I just got that one. That's why I'm freaking out. I never knew I had it. And guess what's going on, guys? This one. He kind of looks like a monkey without his face, but it's a cool monkey. All right, uniform. Any new uniforms? I'm not too sure if I have. But if I had to pick, which uniform would I pick? Hmm. What goes along with it? I wish I had this one, but I don't. Still have to go for that. Normally, I really don't go for, like, uniforms. I really don't, like, go for specific challenges just because. I probably should because I would. it would probably help me level up faster. I can actually get the stuff I wanted to get instead of complaining about every time I <laughs> make one of these videos. But for a thingy majiggy, what should I put on? I always have a such tough time trying to make decision decisions, so don't hate me. I'll just put that on, whatever. Patch. Let's try to find a new cool patch to go along with this prestige. Huh, last time I used Wargasm because, I don't know, look at it, it's sweet. I used that last time, but let's try to mix it up. What's it cooler that... I guess that's kind of cool. Best in show. Get the game winning kill cam with the guard dog. That's kind of cool. Kill four or more enemies with one Trinity Rocket Bullseye. 
I remember getting that. It was on Prison Break, I believe. Um, let's keep going along here, see if there's anything better. This is like the most challenging decision in my life. Trying to pick a patch in, in Call of Duty Ghosts. Be last man standing, no. Boring stuff, none of these look that cool. I barely have any. Alright, now we're cooking. We got some interesting things here. Kill 225 enemies by calling in Battle Hines. Death from above. You know what? I'm gonna pick that one because I love the eagle. The eagle is my logo and there's an eagle in this patch, so I have to use it. Alright, for the background, some more tough decisions. Oh, that matches so well. I think I might use that with that, but let's see the new ones I got. Lightning Bolt? Hey, that one's even cooler. That matches more. That's not new. I actually had that. I believe this one might be new, which is awesome. Wow, that's pretty cool too. There are- Oh, that was nice. That one's really nice. It's either this one or the Lightning Bolt. Huh, this one or the Lightning Bolt. This one's like more dark and mysterious, while this one's like lightning bolt ish and it's yeah uh, I, can't, I can't decide i'm picking the uh, i lied again i'm picking the lightning bolt you know why because it says death from above and lightning bolts come from above <laughs> actually i don't think that's true i don't lightning bolts come from the ground and they actually go up it only looks like it's going down or top down but it's actually going bottom up any any scientists watching this video please tell me below because i i really don't know and i and I think they come from the bottom. I don't know. Now, what else should I show? Because I showed my patches. I showed my new armor unlock stuff. Let's show my classes for my other um, my other prestige. So, as you can tell, I didn't buy many loadouts. Because, personally, I don't think you need that many. I think having this many loadouts is stupid. Because, when are you ever going to need to decide between, like, 10 setups? Is it even 10? I think so. So I just stuck with these first three, and I, I changed these out frequently. So this is one of my more recent classes. It's it's still in testing stages. I'm not too sure if it's the best type of specialist class, but it's pretty good because I have all the perks that I feel are pretty necessary. I, but I didn't put any like stealthy perks on. I know a lot of people really like to use perks like incog and off the grid and that sort of stuff, and they're great if you plan on going really high kill streaks. I don't think using these type of perks are completely necessary when using low kill streaks or even if you die a lot, they're not that necessary because I I feel it's just wasting a point. I feel a lot better putting perks that actually give me bonus like this instant because the incog perk and like, um, well blind eye, not incog, but incog too I guess. Blind eye, all these stealthy perks only work in certain situations like off the grid. It only It's, it's only helpful when the enemies have sat comps and um, blind eye is only helpful when the enemies have air support or oracles or sentries while sleight of hand and agility and ready up and quick draw these help you all the time they help you zoom faster this this always helps you run fast reload faster and your weapon is ready faster and being quick is pretty necessary I feel in this game you want to be quick and that's why I feel like this specialist class is so powerful for the main perks it's soccer amplify focus fully loaded and hardline I tend not to change this that often you guys can definitely replace Fully Loaded with Scavenger if you if you uh, prefer that. And I think I might prefer that too because I like using Scavenger more on Specials classes than I do with like Assault Killstreak classes. That's that. This has always, I think, been my favorite gun in Call of Duty Ghosts. Um, I just think it feels super like comfortable and it fits my playstyle so well. I love it a lot. And I always throw in the silencer and foregrip because I think it's easier to control with the foregrip. It's definitely not necessary, but it does help at longer ranges. I would probably put on extended mags if that were my secondary choice. Alright, for this other class, this is like my high killing, I want to kill everything on the freaking map class. I want to break the scoreboard type of class. This is the M27 IAR. If you haven't tried this, if you haven't used it, or if you haven't died by this, which I'm sure hasn't happened because a lot of people use this now, you would know that this is a very powerful, powerful weapon. It's, a, it's an LMG, so you walk like a turtle, you aim like a turtle, you reload like a turtle, you're slow. And, um, <laughs> I was thinking of the I Like Turtles, the kid in the video with the you got you, got, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, whatever. But, um, I put the foregrip and silencer because the foregrip helps. Again, it helps you, um, be more, like, stable and it's easier to aim. 
and it's like a death laser with foregrip. This thing is literally like a death freaking laser. And it's weird because it seems like in every Call of Duty, there is always that one SMG that is just a death laser. You put thermal and silencer, it's just like zzzz. You got like red beams shooting out of your gun like Iron Man's, you know, freaking thingy, majiggy. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, um, it's really good, and for, I didn't put a second, I know lethal, no tactical, because I don't need that stuff when going on high kill streaks. I feel like secondaries are useless if you have a fully automatic primary, and lethals and tacticals, I don't feel are as worth it, because once you throw it, it's done. It's not coming back, and scavenger does not replenish them. I believe the only way to get them back is by completing fuel orders, and I do you get them from ammo crates? I'm not too sure. If you know you get, if you guys know if you can get lethals and tacticals from ammo crates, please tell me because I'm actually kind of curious. And then stalker, amplify, focus, fully loaded, and hardline. This is like I, like I showed before, very um similar to my AK-12 class with a perk setup. These tend not to vary that often. I like using Amplify more than Dead Silence just because hearing the enemy footsteps I feel is super helpful and it also makes your teammates footsteps quieter so it's even, it's even easier to hear the enemy footsteps but Dead Silence is also a great choice if you plan to survive for like a very very long time. That's why it's helpful on specials classes and I don't think it's as helpful on um, assault kill streak classes because I don't want to live forever. I, I try to live as long as I can, but this class is not meant for going for chem strikes and that kind of stuff. But stalker is necessary straight for enemies. Focus is needed no matter what. Fully loaded, you, know, you can switch if you want, but I like using fully loaded. And then hardline because you get your kill streaks so much quicker. And then this is where like this is where the bread and butter is. This is what gives you most of your kills. If you play on a big map like Prison Break or um, Stonehaven. The Trinity Rocket, the Battle Hind, and the Helo Pilot do work. They do a lot of work too, because this Helo Pilot, I got so used to it, off the start it was pretty uncomfortable trying to fly this thing around, it, it felt so awkward, and it just didn't feel comfortable, and now that I used it so much, it's even easier, and I just shred people down with it on Prison Break, oh my, I got so many high scoring gameplays that I plan to show in a new series, you'll see that coming up soon, and it, it's just nuts. I think the Battle Hind is also one of the better assault kill streaks, and the Tree Rocket, it's up to you. They do take some practice getting used to, and it might not seem like it because you, know, you just click and it locks on, blah blah blah, but it does take a little skill because I notice whenever I call in a Trinity Rocket, if I go ahead and just launch the rockets as soon as I call it in, it seems like none of the rockets actually lock on and they end up all missing. So when I use this, and I'm recommending for you guys, when you use the Trinity Rocket, make sure you wait like a few seconds until you call in the rockets. Like, take your like little square reticule of the, the Trinity Rocket and hover them over the, the red square enemies and wait a few seconds and then click it. Not all of them, but click one on an enemy, then move it to a different enemy, wait a few seconds, then click it because I think it takes a little bit of time for the Trinity Rockets actually to lock on. And then for the final like predator-like Missile strike, not missile, I guess you can call it that, but the last missile in the Trinity Rocket is like your um, Predator missile, but it's a lot weaker. If you hear that bell, that's my cat because she wears a bell and she's always tinkerbelling everywhere. But the, the last missile, make sure you, I don't want to say don't use the boost, but don't use the boost. I feel like using the boost actually makes it more difficult and even harder to control. And most of the time when I use the boost, I just miss. I tend to, you know, come down really slowly, and then once I know for sure I won't miss, if I use the boost, I use it. So I guess that's like my pro killstreak tip of the day. You're welcome. And I'm very sorry, guys. If you don't want to hear me just talk and talk and talk forever about a certain topic in the game that might not be that interesting to you, please tell me, and I won't go in depth as much. And then lastly here, it's the SC-2010. This gun is so powerful. I just used it in my recent Devastation map pack gameplays, which if you haven't seen, definitely check them out because I have my first impressions on each map. And I grinded pretty hard to get those four videos made in one day and I put them up. I put them all up. And, well, not all of them up. I put three of them up in the same day. The last video during rendering, it stopped rendering at 98%. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Why? Why did you stop rendering? So I had to restart it and um, I actually posted the gameplay either yesterday or today if you're watching this video. 
So I put on Red Dot and the Muzzle Brake. The Muzzle Brake can be switched out with um, the Silencer or even Extended Mags. But I feel like the Muzzle Brake is pretty powerful because this gun excels pretty well at long range. And why not make it even better? It shoots so fast and it kills your enemies so quick from up close. And then with the Red Dot Sight, you don't have to use it because the iron sights aren't too bad, but I feel like they sometimes block and they distort my vision because I can't see the enemies that well. So this just clears things up and makes it easier to use. No secondary, no lethal, no tactical. I say that all the time. And then sleight of hand, stalker, amplify, focus, and fully loaded for my perk setup. I put on sleight of hand in replace of sleight of hand on this class because this weapon blows through ammo pretty quick. That's what she said, maybe. And... I feel like I'll, I feel like sleight of hand's a good choice because you get to reload quicker and get back into the action. And then the guard dog, the sentry gun, and the battle hind for this. The guard dog's great. He's man's best friend. He bites people in one bite and he kills them, and he's great. And the sentry gun's also good to put in spots where you're not. So you put it in high traffic areas. You block you you block like passageways, corridors, long range spots, wherever. It's pretty great as long as you place it well. I'm sure a lot of you guys see in my videos me placing my sentry guns and it takes me like half the game to even place them because, I don't know, I take a while to place them. I try to make them perfectly perfect and sometimes it gets me killed. But let's back out of there and I guess that's about it. What else can I show? My, my um, stats maybe? So here we are, a 3.763 kill death ratio. As I always say in my videos, I'm going for a 4KD, and I'm getting there. Slow and steady wins the race. I'm getting there, but it takes so long. Once you start getting a lot of kills and have a high KD, it, it gets even more challenging to raise that KD. And if I don't get at least a 3.763, it goes way down. And then it's like, oh, it's a struggle to get it back up. But uh, my win ratio is a 1.444, which is not the greatest. It's not that good at all, but... As you guys know, I'm a solo player, so I don't win too often. You guys see that in my gameplays where I tend to face people that are partied up, and my team tends to lose a lot, but I'm trying to get that up. And then my total playing time is 4 days, 23 hours, and 55 seconds, so I almost have 5 days, which I don't think is too bad for being 7th prestige. Am I 7th? Did I lie to myself? Um, yes, I'm 7th. Okay, okay. I'm 7th now. I always get confused because this whole new um, prestiging system with every different character sometimes gets confusing and I'm like, what what prestige am I? But you can count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I didn't reach the 8th yet because, you know, I just started this one, but I guess that's about it. Oh yeah, one last thing before I end this, as you guys know, I've been, I've been uh, wearing gloves. And some people think it's the most ridiculously crazy thing in the world. People call me, wow, dude, why the hell are you wearing gloves? I don't know, because they're freaking sweet and they give me grip. That, I guess that's my main reason. Because my hands, my hands get pretty sweaty when I'm going hard. And I'm and I'm trying to go for those high scoring gameplays. And I don't like when my fingers and my hands slip all over my controller. So I went out and bought these bad guys. They're Adidas gloves, which I love Adidas. I'm wearing Adidas now. And they definitely, I think they help, but... Probably not as much as like a scuff controller would. I plan to get a scuff controller very soon because I wanna I wanna jump shot and um knife people without even having to move my thumb. Which would be really helpful because jump shotting will help you win gunfights a lot more often than not jump shotting. But I think that's about it guys. I'm sorry if I forgot something, I didn't mean to. Should I make a class before I start my um my my next video I guess I want to make a class that I'm gonna use in another video and I really apologize if this, if this video is too long and boring I'm sorry because it's pretty long but let's quickly make a class here if I had to make a class for my first one I think I'm gonna go with the SC 2010 because it's a freaking beast weapon and I like it a lot and I don't have many squad points so I can't buy that much that stinks I'm not even gonna bother buying stuff right now because I don't even have enough to buy anything really anyways guys as I always say, it's Elite Shot here, aka Sean, your friendly COD fanboy. And before you go, definitely check out my Devastation Map Pack gameplays if you haven't already. Peace!